Hey everyone, Rob here, and I have some breaking news as I was woken up this morning here in Reykjavik, Iceland by a series of earthquakes that have apparently been going on for some time, but i have now starting to wake up because of these. Now, we can see here a map of the Reykjanes Peninsula, and you can see all of these green stars which indicate earthquakes of a, a sort of magnitude of 3.0 or higher, uh, and then all of the other dots are just earthquakes that have happened. Now, four earthquakes larger than a magnitude of four have been recorded in this Reykjanes Peninsula area since 7.30 this morning. And the largest one was at 8.22 a.m. and was 4.8 magnitude in, in size. And the tremors are obviously felt all throughout this Reykjanes Peninsula area, capital area, which includes Reykjavik and things like that, and in Borgafjord. Now, an announcement from the government says that the continued earthquake activity can be expected in the coming days and that people are advised, of course, not to travel in this area where there's an increased chance of falling rocks and things like that. Now, a natural disaster, disaster expert at the Icelandic Meteorological Office said in an interview that um, most of these earthquakes and, and all the work that's going into over the earthquakes, but 90 out of the 1,600 earthquakes have been touched since yesterday have been confirmed in a relatively big size. Now, the scientists from the Meteorological Agency and the University of Iceland have been meeting with the Civil Defense uh, at 9 a.m. this morning. And from that, they have now adjusted the international color code from green, which is what it was before, uh, to orange. Now, the orange color is actually representing an increased likelihood of an eruption. Fagersfeld is the only Icelandic volcano that currently has a color code other than green. Uh, so the volcanoes in Grimsvat, Katla, Askia, they're all green. And have, even though they've been showing signs of unrest in, in the recent little bit. Uh, but Fagersfeld, just because of this most recent earthquake swarm, uh, has now been updated. It, Although the volcanic craters that erupted in the two eruptions in Fagersfeld were only about 20 kilometers uh, and from the airport, uh, the eruptions there in, in 2021 and 22 had basically no effect on international flights or the use of the airport. So these, this area tends to be smaller eruptions in size. Now, uh, if we could see here on the news, uh, headlines are saying all indications are that eruption is basically on its way. Uh, and then this guy here, who if you've seen other videos, uh, Thorvald Thorson, hopefully I pronounced that right, he's, he's a professor of... of uh, rock science and volcanology at the University of Iceland. He says the seismic activity now indicates that an eruption is imminent. And those are pretty strong words. But um, he's saying that the seismic activity is rather shallow at a depth of three to six kilometers. And it's clear to him, uh, or at least to the data that he's reviewing, that these earthquakes are related to magma movements. So he's just saying that it can be assumed that the magma has come cl quite close to the surface. And he also thinks that the possible eruption will be in the same kind of area as the eruptions of 21 and 22. In fact, it's felt in that uh, probably somewhat further north than the eruption of 2022 in Mirador. Uh, but it's not going to be some catastrophic eruptions. And he said that if you look at the history of volcanic eruptions in the Reykjanes Peninsula, during the eruptions, they tend to start with smaller eruptions in the run-up, such as the ones that happened there. And then... Uh, eruptions are larger in scale than those that precede them. But we didn't see that the case uh, from the eruption that occurred in 2022 versus 2021. The one that was in 2022 was actually quite a bit smaller. So anyone's guess as uh, how much magma is going to rise and how much sulfur is released and if there's an eruption and how much lava will uh, come as a result for that. But he does say that if the eruption continues for a long time, it could lead to an obviously inconvenience for the neighboring settlements such as Grindavik, Reykjansbæir, uh, Vogur, and it will definitely affect the entire capital area because of things like gas pollution, uh, depending on the wind direction, and uh, of course the roads. Now we're of course going to be feeling these tremors and earthquakes in the run-up, uh, but it shouldn't cause any large-scale damage. Damage from a lava flow, of course, will depend on the extent of the eruptions, and if we remember, the eruptions in Gallingadalur and Mirdalur were relatively small uh, and were 4 to 8 cubic meters per second. But a large eruption could lead to a larger lava flow, but in a shorter period of time. And then, of course, we have to look at fire damage and, and things like that could 
definitely impact things. But let's uh, we can see all of these all of these news sources are showing this. But what I want to do now is just jump over to the actual maps that we've been so accustomed to looking at previously. Uh, we can see here there's a couple green stars around the whole country in the Vatnajökull area and then and then towards the capital area. But if we take a look at the Reykjanes Peninsula, we can see again it's pretty intense. So uh, there's a chart down here showing the magnitude. We can see some of them are inching close to five uh, today and over the past uh, 24 hours there's been quite a bit. But let's take a look at the table because I feel like the table really shows us all in what we're looking at. And we're seeing a total of 1,417 earthquakes and those are all what it is. You know, you can see a lot of them are between a magnitude of uh, under one to two. And then if we look at three and larger and we open that, we can take a look here at the location and the times of some. So you can see the last one is around 10.20. I mean, currently it's just after lunch, 12.20. So we're looking at about two hours where we've had a breath of, of relief. Uh, and we can see that was a, a 3.1. And then we had the 4.5, 3.7, 4.6, uh, and so on. Um, if we're looking down here, you can see throughout the night, there's there's been a lot of these over threes. Um, I mean, in, in total, if we're looking at over the past, uh, well, 24 hours, basically, you're saying, you know, all of Wednesday, we can see here since last night, um, we have 26 magnitudes of three or higher that have been, uh, and at that, you can feel them in the capital area. So definitely a lot going on. Not sure where this is going to all end, but it's uh, it's all pointing that if this continues, most likely it will end in an eruption. Those of you coming to Iceland, do not fear. Most likely it's not going to affect your flights. If anything, it will just be another sight to see. If you're flying from Europe, hopefully you'll be able to see it out the window as it's that close on the flight path uh, that that they might be able to see the uh, the lava if it was to erupt. And if you're coming from North America. I'm sure there's going to be some way for people to go and visit the eruption uh, as long as it's not too dangerous. So that's it for now. I mean, I'm going to uh, keep everyone up to date. Uh, we're back on sort of this eruption watch here in Iceland. And uh, yeah, look forward to giving you the next set of updates. Until next time, thanks so much for watching.